Hi, today we're looking at a vintage Grandstand BMX Flyer game. Uh, purchase this off eBay. It's, uh, I think I paid about £33 for it. I've just noticed it's got a, a crack in the uh, in the screen. I thought it was just a scratch, but it turns out to be a crack, which is not great. Uh, apparently it was not working. Um, so I think we'll pop some batteries in and we'll see what it does. Right. Let's uh, put the cover on and we'll see what it does. And it does nothing. Right. I think there was a screw under here I noticed, so we'll remove that. And then we'll pull the rest of the screws out and we'll see what's inside. And we're in. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, check the voltage coming out of the battery compartment. It looks like somebody's repaired this previously because I've noticed there seems to be a washer that's been soldered onto this. So that's definitely not factory, that's the factory contact there. And this one looks like it's been reinforced with a washer or something. It looks like somebody's had a go repairing this previously. And we've got 6.2 volts there, so that's good. What happens when we switch it on then? And the battery voltage is rapidly declining. So to me, that would suggest we've got a short somewhere on here. Now one thing I've just noticed, which is a bit unusual, I thought this might have been a VFD, but it actually looks like it's an LCD screen with a, a cold cathode backlight instead of the uh, the VFD display that's been in quite a lot of the, the games that I've looked at. Um, and I would think that this here is the driver circuit that's responsible for generating the high voltage to light up the uh, the cold cathode tube. Uh, what else have we got in here? Looks like that's the uh, main microcontroller. And we've got a small transistor there which um, from its location looks like that's what drives the piezo buzzer here. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four, five screws that uh, looks like hold the circuit board in. So I think I'll remove those and then we'll see what's underneath this. I can't see any other screws or anything on it unless there's some underneath. Ah, there's the one I've missed. Let's remove that one then. Right. So I guess that's the decal. I'm gonna, it looks like somebody's been into this before with that being slid out like that and it looks like there's a mark there. So that must be what generates the colours. I've got a, a zebra strip on the LCD there. And a chip that's got bike written on it. Bike 6948. Right, so let's move this part out of the way and we'll see if we can see what's going on with this part. Um, there's the cold cathode tube cold cathode fluorescent and I think the first thing I want to check is this transistor here which is there so, so I've got a feeling that's the only power transistor that's in the thing so I think uh, that will be a good place to start so we'll go into diode mode and we'll just check uh, there 
And that actually seems okay. That doesn't seem like it's shorted. Well, let's have a look then. We've got, uh, I think some of these contacts need cleaned up. I'll clean those up as well while we're on. So, where does the power come in? So we've got two contacts here which go to this um, power socket and that one there is the ground. Although, it seems a bit strange that. Because it's got there minus 6 volts which goes to the negative terminal but then it goes to the positive terminal on the, uh, the cold cathode tube. Which is rather odd. We've got a J plus and a J minus here. Let's try and trace those. That goes along here. And then that goes to the power switch. And it goes to a transistor over here by the look of it. Let's check that transistor. Again, it doesn't appear to be any short on that. I think I'll just put a little bit IP on this uh, screen and we'll get this screen out of the way. Oh, actually it looks like it's just uh, it looks like it's just came off in anyway. Right, I'll just put that to one side. I wonder if somebody's wired this plug up wrong or something. I mean, it doesn't look like it's been adjusted or replaced. Yeah. Right, let's try and trace this through. So, we've got negative comes in here, which is the ground, and that goes round to here. Looks like it goes through it, jumper, to there, and then to this contact here. And what's that one for? That's for the sound on and off. Right. And it also goes along here. To this part of the circuit here as well. Let's see if there's any diodes or anything on this. Right, I can see there's a diode about here, and there's a diode here. Let's check those diodes. Right, so one of the diodes is across there and there, so we'll try that one. seems okay and the other diode is between there and there and that seems okay Well, it definitely looks like it's drawn some current when we switch it on and nothing a lot's happening so there definitely seems to be some kind of fault on it uh, let 
let's try and see what the what it measures between there and there. Make better with the batteries out actually. Right, so that looks that looks like where the power comes in from the battery terminal. And when you move the switch, it switches it to this terminal here. So let's see what the resistance between that and that is. That actually doesn't look too bad. Seems to be a large metal plate on the back of it. I guess that's to stop interference or whatever. It just seems unusual why the plate would be positive. Because it looks like when you slide that switch, it joins that to there, which would be sending the positive to the uh, to this plate. Right, I think just to be sure, I'm going to take the uh, I'm going to take this uh, power transistor out. Let's pull the batteries out first, so we're not shorting anything out. It's a D571. Yeah, that seems to measure okay. Doesn't appear to be that. Right, I'm going to take that little zener out. I'll just lift. It. Actually, I'll take it out. I'm going to take that little zener out, and we'll see uh, if that measures okay. Just in case there's a problem with that. Seems to be measuring okay as well. Alright, so we'll pop that back in. Alright, so what else have we got on here then? There's a particularly lot on here. Um, 
There's a couple of tantalum bead capacitors there. Uh, unless one of those has gone short. It's a pity it's not easy to switch on. I think I'll just clean those contacts up quick just to uh, just to see if that makes any difference. But it looks like there's a short or something somewhere. batteries back in we'll see if we can measure any voltages anyway right so that's off and when we slide to the on position it links those two connectors i think i'll tag a couple of wires just on there temporarily so we can switch the power on and off easily without uh, messing about with the switch one moment please right i've soldered a couple of wires on to uh, simulate pressing the on off switch and I've also bridged out the sound switch just in case the backlights failed and you know at least we might get some sound or something but unfortunately it still seems quite dead so I think what I'm going to do next actually I'm going to pop the batteries out and I'm going to go over these uh, actually I'll just disconnect one of the battery wires it'll probably be easier and disconnect this battery wire a sec and then I'm going to go around this chip just uh, on the off chance we might have a bad joint or something. Let's right, see, I don't know what uh, what else we can do with this one really. There's not really a lot else uh, a lot else in it. Right, put a bit of flux on that, and we'll uh, try and go over some of these pins. Right, so we'll give that a clean up. And we'll see if that's made any difference. I just wondered if this chip might have failed, maybe, or... Uh, right, so what I need to do is solder this wire back on. Actually, that wire's not the best. I mean, we were getting voltage there, so... I'm just going to replace that wire quick. Alright. Let's see if that does anything now. Oh, well we have a backlight now. So at least we've got some progress. Um, oh, that seems slightly flickery. Seems to have settled down there now. I wonder if we get any sound if I press any. Oh, it's just gone off now. Oh. Seems like it's some bad connection on this or something then. Actually, the power wires have just came off there. Yeah, it's still flickery. Seems to be a little bit more stable there now. Let's um, let's see if we get any sound or anything. I'm not sure how we start this off. Right, well, we don't appear to be getting any sound. I'll just oh, well, I haven't disconnected the power there. It's still connected, but it's just gone off. And there definitely seems some kind of issue here. Well, at least we've had it doing something now. Yeah, it's not coming on again now. There you are. I'll connect this up again. And we'll just see if we're getting power to this board still. I 
we are 5.2 volts. So why has it gone off? We just had it doing something. So there's a glimmer of hope there now. Just to rule out the socket, I'm going to put, well, I mean, what voltage there? That's like, I was just thinking of soldering the wire straight to the battery contacts just to bypass this socket, but we're still measuring voltage. So, I'll tell you what, I'll just try that. Just, uh, I've got nothing to lose. Right, so that's the power going directly to that contact there, and it's not doing anything. Oh, something's getting hot. Transistor's getting hot. But that measured alright. Yeah, it's very hot that. Well, that was just working a second ago, so why is it getting hot? I'm just going to measure that transistor again. And it's measuring okay. So why is it getting hot? Could we have a capacitor leaking or something? Stopping it from starting up maybe? Or what are those? 50 volts, 0 0.22 microfarads. There's a big capacitor on the output there, which is rated at uh, one kilovolt. Right. Well, there definitely seems to be some kind of problem on the high voltage circuit. At least we found out where it is now, because like I say, that was getting hot. So there's definitely something. I just might replace those three capacitors. Well, I've replaced the three capacitors, and it still does exactly the same. Sometimes the uh, cold cathode tube lights up, and sometimes it doesn't. And this transistor still gets hot, so uh, I'm not sure whether that transistor's breaking down internally, which it could possibly be, or whether it's the insulation on the transformer here could be breaking down. And uh, when I put the uh, the scope on the base of the transistor, the waveforms jumping all over the place. Um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure on what the problem is on this. Well, one thing I have discovered on the sound side of things, it looks like this wire here has been pinched and there's a little bit of a, a strand of it uh, sticking out there, so I think that's why we've got no sound. I might just replace that, uh, that piezo. Um, I'll do just extend the wires on it. Is that one going to the... I'll tell you what, I'll just see if that's going to the outside or the inside. Because I've tried soldering these before and they just don't tend not to solder. I've got uh, some replacement ones, so if it is uh, 
broken, but you can replace it. Right, let's see which wire is still connected. And it's the outside one, the centre one isn't. And I say it looks like it's been pinched there as well. There's some marks. I'm sure somebody's been into this before. That's what I noticed on the um on the the coloured membrane thing here. It's got a mark there, like somebody's put it too high up or something when they reassembled it, so I definitely think somebody's been into this before as well. Now I might just repl I don't know whether just re I've never had much success resold with these, but we'll give it a go. Let's see if I can solder a new piece of wire on. And then at least we'll see if we get any sound out of it. I think the actual process is uh, okay, to be quite honest with you. So I think there still might be hope for it yet. I don't know whether to order another one of these transistors, this um, D, 2SD571. I don't actually have one. But it might be worth ordering one off eBay and we'll give it a try to see if that uh, sorts the problem. Right, we seem to be getting that solder on, that's a first. Right, we'll see if we can get the sound working for now then. And then like I said, I think I'll order one of those transistors. And if not, I do have a backup plan, which I think we might be to still repair it. Right, let's see if this does anything now. A few moments later. So, yes, we have sound now. Well, at least it's some progress. I'm fairly sure it's either the transformer or the actual cold cathode tube. So I had a little think on it and I thought, well, all the cold cathode tube is doing is pretty much just a backlight for the LCD. And most backlights these days are LEDs. So I had some um, LED strip, uh, which was 12 volts, but I've cut it into different sections and just basically soldered them together, got rid of the resistors and I put a resistor in line there just to limit the current and then I filled the um, the cavity here just with the glue from the glue gun and then I used the little grinding pen there just to give it a bit of a, a, rough, uh, a rough surface just to try and diffuse it a bit. So this is the plan, so we'll see exactly how it works out. So, we'll reinstall this with the four screws here and then I just need to solder a couple of wires on and we'll see if it uh, if it looks like it's going to work or not. I mean, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't, but you never know. I think I put one of them screws in the wrong place. I think that should be a small one. I think they're actually two different sizes, these. That's a small screw. Is this a longer one then? Yeah, that's the longer one. Right, so I'll just tin this wire here. And I'll set the excess off. And this is the positive. Now, these connections around the outside, which go to this, uh, I don't know, I guess it's like an anti-interference type of strip stuff, uh, go to the positive when the batteries apply or switched on. So we can use that for there. And we'll just take the ground straight from the, uh, the battery box, I think. And we'll just go on to here. Right. So in theory, that should be it. I 
Now can we get it back together without pinching all the wires? Feels like there's something stopping it there. Yeah. Right, this uh, this not sitting right. That feels a bit better. All right, do we give it a quick test before we put screws in? I think I'll just turn the light off and we'll see what it looks like. And it actually doesn't look too bad. All the display seems to be working. It actually doesn't look bad at all, that. Right, we shall put the screws back in and see if it all works. Right, shall try that. And I've got no idea how you play it, so... We have to jump them wheelie or something. Have we got to go down there? Down. Right. We'll try that again then. I guess he's supposed to do a wheelie over that one. Like I said, I've got no idea how you play it, but it seems to be working. We've got sound, we've got picture, and like I say, it doesn't actually look that bad. Well, I'd say another success on that one, even though it's, uh, it's not quite original, but uh, it seems to be working. So, well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it the thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, please subscribe. Any comments or questions, please leave it in the comments section below. And as always, have a great day. Thanks for watching.